today we're not gonna be talking about clerkships we're actually going to be talking about things that are relevant for my pre-med students <laughs> what's up what's up what's up you guys welcome back to my channel for those of you guys that are new here my name is morgan i am a second year medical student in new york city my school has an accelerated preclinical curriculum so i am already in clerkships right now i am on my psychiatry clerkship it is january 2024 if you are applying to medical school during the upcoming cycle, we call that the 2025 cycle because it's based on the year that you would matriculate. So it's the application cycle that is going to start this May. So it's going to run from May 2024 all the way through 2025. And you might be thinking, okay, it's January. Like I have until May or June or July or whenever you want to submit your primary application. But I will say that time flies and there's so many different things that you need to think about and get ready for the medical school application cycle so i thought that it was a prime time to share a five month plan for those of you guys that are applying to medical school we are going to go month by month what you should be working on what you could be working on what you can do to get ahead and i'm hoping that this will make your life so much easier and just lay everything out for you so the first thing that we are going to talk about is of course is January. So what can you be doing in January if you're applying to medical school this cycle? Figure out what you're gonna do for your letters of recommendation. So for letters of recommendation, when it comes to applying to medical school, there's gonna be two options. You can either have a committee letter if your school offers them, or you will send individual letters. If your school offers a committee letter, make sure you're in connection with your pre-health advising office and go ahead, look on your school's website or meet with your pre-health advisor and see what you need. And sometimes you have to have a completed, you know, primary application. Sometimes you have to have letters of recommendation, different things like that. So if your school offers a committee letter, I want you to go ahead and start looking into that and make a plan so that way you can submit all of that and have everything ready. If you're going to do individual letters, then now is the time to set up your Interfolio account. I absolutely love Interfolio, especially if you're applying through multiple application services. So let's say you're from Texas, so you're going to apply via TMDSAS, but you also want to apply to some um, DO schools out of state, so you're also going to apply via Comus. It's super annoying to have your letter writers write you know, like they're going to write the same letters and they're going to send the same letters, but I think it's really annoying for them to have to send those letters multiple times. So you're just going to make their life so much easier by, they will have to just upload their letters to Interfolio and then from there you can send them to both of the different application services. So that is one thing that you can go ahead and get done in January. Second thing I want you to get done in January is to write the first draft of your personal statement. So the personal statement can be tough. It is going to take a lot of time. 5,300 or 5,000 characters inclusive of spaces. It seems like a lot or it may seem like a little, but regardless, it's kind of tough to figure out how you want to articulate why you want to be a doctor in that amount of space. So I want you to go ahead and start working on that. Once you have a solid draft, you can send it out to someone, someone who is in medicine or has familiarity with the medical school application process because you're going to want someone that's familiar with that so that way they can give you feedback in relation to the content of your personal statement. So go ahead and get draft one done. The next thing I want you to do, if you're applying, applying via AMCAS, which is basically if you're applying to MD schools that are not in Texas, you're going to apply via AMCAS. I want you to go ahead and apply for their fee assistance program. If you have not taken the MCAT yet, then of course, with the fee assistance program, you're going to get access to MCAT prep materials, but it's also going to cover your primary application for up to 20 schools. So definitely make sure you go ahead and apply for that. The next thing I want you to start doing is thinking about your med school list. I highly recommend that you grab MSAR if you're going to be applying there. Um, MSAR is really great if you're applying to AMCAS schools because it just kind of lists all the schools. You can filter by if they have dual degree programs, different things like that. Um, and it's really important now because if you're going to do CASPER, AMC preview, where you want to send your letters, um, all the different things, it's just kind of a good idea to go ahead and start having a list in your brain so I also want you guys to work on that all right so January is done 
you're working on those four things, what happens when February rolls around? You've already written your first draft of your personal statement and you've already sent it off for revisions. That person has sent you back those revisions. So what I want you to do, update your personal statement again. If the person you sent it off to, um, you trust them and you think that there's more work that needs to be done, which probably after the first draft there will be, but if you think that person can still give you better input, then I want you to edit your personal statement, send it back to them. Next thing I want you to do is brainstorm your list for the activity section. So for AMCAS, you will have 15 spots for your work and activity sections and three of those you will be able to um, designate as most meaningful. So for all of them, you'll get 7,000 characters. For the most meaningful, you'll get an additional um, 1,325 characters. So what I want you to start doing is thinking back deep into your brain. What have you done since freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, senior year, um, during your gap years and things like that? What are the top 15 activities that you want to do? Make sure that you're including, you know, your research, your clinical experience, also any extracurriculars that were really fun for you. Like I was a tour guide at Clemson, which is my undergrad university. Really love that. So I included that on my list and as you're making that list just go ahead and start thinking about who's gonna be your main contact person do you have a phone number or an email for them what um, years were you involved what do the hours look like um, and then we'll get back to actually writing the descriptions later all right so January is done February is done March once again, same thing, we're gonna edit your personal statement. So once again, that person has sent you back those revisions. If you have an updated personal statement, do you think that this person can give you even more revisions? Is it still being helpful? If not, then edit it and then send it to somebody else. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna send our letter of recommendation request. So once again, if you um, if you have a committee letter, then you're figuring out what your school is doing. You're kind of making your own timeline for that if you're doing committee letter. However, if you are um, you set up your interfolio account because you're doing individual letters of recommendation, then you have that interfolio account. You're we're going to go ahead and send a letter of recommend letter of recommendation request to be an interfolio and you're going to shoot all of your letter writers a quick email and just be like hey it's me uh, here's my interfolio information you should have just gotten an email do you mind um uploading this letter of recommendation i think it's um medical schools are not really going to look at your letter of recommendations until they're looking at your secondary applications for the most part however people get busy also um i realize that some professors don't work during the summers because they only work during the school year and that's how like their pay and their salary is set up so you don't want to be waiting until it's like july and they're on vacation i'm going to show you a letter writer letter of recommendation request email you can just copy paste this send it to your letter writers and you're all set the next thing i want you to do is finalize that school list so in february we were you know looking at the nsr trying to decide like what is important to us in medical school and you know what's going to be on our school list now i want you to shave off some of the schools okay i have a budget to apply to 20 schools if i have fee assistance program maybe i don't apply to 30 but i have 40 on my list shave it down really just think about um what's important to you i have a ton of posts on creating a med school list i have a series that i just shared in january of 2024 check that out finalize your school list set it aside Right, the next thing that I want you to do is now that you have your finalized school list, you know if those schools are going to require CASPER or AMC preview. So what I want you to do, if any of your schools require AMC preview, I want you to go to the AMC website. You can literally just Google AMC preview and I want you to register. Registration actually opens at the end of January um, for some of the March dates and these dates I've heard fill up. I did not have to take AMC preview, but I highly recommend going ahead and registering um, for your AMC preview date. Also, it's just one more thing that like, if you've already taken the MCAT and different things like that, then one thing that you can get done before your primary application, or I kind of like what I did for Casper, which I would also recommend for AMC preview is to kind of take it, um, so your application is gonna open in May for you to start filling it out. You can like submit it at the end of May, um, and then you have like, a whole month while they're verifying applications before they send them out to the first school so like that month is a good time to do like casper amc preview different things like that but i ever heard that the dates can fill up not speaking from personal experience just what i've heard um so it's just nice to go ahead and have a date set for that so you remember in february you brainstormed that list for your activity section so now it's time to draft your activity section descriptions and send them out for someone to edit them. Now we are in April, the application opens next month, what are we doing? We're gonna finalize our personal statement. So you've sent it out at least three times already for someone to get feedback. So you've gotten it back. I want you to make sure, you know, do those last couple of drafts, really think about, you know, is it perfect? Send it out one more time for someone to edit it for content, edit it again, and then send it out to like an English teacher or like a friend who's an English major or like someone you really trust that can get all those last like grammar and spelling and all of those mistakes. So send it out one last time and finalize your personal statement. 
all right? And after you do that, we're gonna edit the activity section. So you sent it out in March, you got someone to give you feedback, they gave it back to you, update it again, send it out, um, and get some more revisions. But now we're in May. The application is opening in early May. So what are we gonna do? First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna order our official transcripts. I recommend ordering a copy of all of your official transcripts, like from your undergrad universities, from any dual credit schools that you did in high school, all that stuff. I recommend ordering a copy for yourself because you want to have um, that to look at while you're entering into the application. This is very controversial. Some people are like, you don't need to do it. I think that if AMCAST or the application service, if they're going to be comparing your application against your official transcript, I want to be putting it in based on my official transcript because just sometimes I notice this like the wording and the class names and stuff like that can be a little bit different um, from unofficial to official transcript. So order that. Once you open your application, so I think, you know, like the first week of May usually is when AMCAST will open. You can put in all your schools and then you'll get like a transcript um, request form, ID number, all of that stuff. So like once you have your AMCAST ID number and different things like that, you can just go on the website, whether it's Clearinghouse or um, parchment, whatever app, whatever service that your school uses to send transcripts, um, put in your AMCAS ID and send it to AMCAS. That is going to be one of the limiting factors. Like if it comes to the end of May, you submit your primary application. If they don't have your transcript, they can't compare and contrast those two. So that will be the one thing that's going to hold you back. Because your school is really old school and only does mail-in transcripts. They don't do digital. Really, you want to make sure that you're going ahead and getting that done sooner rather than later. TMDSAS does not require you to send official transcripts until they request them. So if you're applying via TMDSAS, you would still order official transcripts for yourself to use when you're putting stuff into the application service, but you wouldn't order official transcripts to send to TMDSAS. But if you're applying via AMCAS, you would go ahead and order those and get those sent to AMCAS. You've already finalized your personal statement in April, so we're going to finalize our activities descriptions in May. And the last thing I want you to do in May is to submit your application for a Comus fee assistance program. But Comus is a little bit different. They actually limit the number of fee assistance applicants um, that they offer every year. They cover, I think, like one your application to one school, so it's not like 20, like AMCAS. Um, but also, once you're approved, you have only a couple of days, I think like maybe three weeks, to submit your application, or you don't um, get that assistance. So you wanna make sure that you're ready to submit your application, but you also wanna do it early enough so that way there is still money. So make sure that you're submitting your Acomas fee assistance program. And then of course, you know, you're filling out your application, you're submitting your application based on the dates for the year. So that is your five month plan. You're probably like, okay, so when do I take the um, MCAT? And also like, what if I have a committee letter? So these are some TBD things. There's no February dates, but there's of course um, dates in January, March, April, May, June, July, August, September for the MCAT. And then of course there's none in October through December. Um, I think it's really great to kind of aim to take the MCAT no later than March, just in case you need to retake it. I don't recommend like going into the MCAT being like, oh, I'm gonna like retake it three times. I'm just gonna see how it goes because like all schools can see all of your attempts. But however, um, you know, things happen, you might need to retake. So I think March is a good time. So that way, if you have to, you can. But um, I have so many videos on MCAT prep. So definitely check those out and then just think about, you know, January or March are really good times to take the MCAT. So we talked about in January, figuring out if your school has a committee letter. So figuring out that timeline and then just kind of working this into my five month plan. So you guys are like, okay, you just gave me this whole video about how I'm going to do everything. Can you help me? I have a new resource that is launching. It's the med school applicant calendar. So it is going to be a calendar that is going to share all of this what is the five month plan? But also this is gonna kind of go be a 12 month calendar. So it's gonna do everything kind of including a little bit of like your secondary applications and different things like that. So everything that I'm sharing with you guys will be in a calendar that you can download. I will put the link below. If you're looking for other freebies to kind of help you, you know that I am always making free content for you guys, always making things that will make your life easier because I know that this process is very difficult. So some freebies that I have that will help. Medical school application tracker. So when you're making your activities um, description list, when you're figuring out who's going to do your letters of recommendation, when you're making your school list, all that good jazz. Um, make sure you're putting all this information in your medical school application tracker. It will help you. And I used it all the way through the lot, like when I started making my school list, all the way through when I made my final decision. So it just kind of has a tab for every single part of the application process. Next thing I have is the scholarship master list. As you're applying to medical school, one thing that you want to do is figure out um, scholarships that will help you cover your application 
fees and then also scholarships that will help you during your first year of medical school to offset some of those costs so make sure you check that out also if you still have another year you're still looking also have some internship opportunities on there as well last thing is the medical school application checklist so this checklist is just kind of once again do you have all of your ECs done do you have your med school list created um, so just like allows you to check everything off as you're going through it. All of these links are going to be in the description below, so make sure to check them out. If you need a little bit more help when you're applying to medical school this cycle, I highly recommend that you check out my course from Applicant to Accepted, a step-by-step -step guide to the personal statement, and then from Applicant to Accepted, step-by-step -step guide to secondary applications. And there is gonna be some more coming soon before this application cycle, but these just kind of walk you detailed, step-by-step, -step, how to write your personal statement with a ton of examples from successful personal statements from those that are already in medical school. And then same thing with secondary um, applications, talking to you how to answer some of the common prompts, how to answer those weird prompts, and then has a huge secondary essay library for a lot of different um, essay prompts. If you guys are interested in them, those are available on my website. I have some students that were accepted, you know, they applied in May of 2023. By December, they had 12 interview invites, five acceptances. So I'm super excited. Students love those courses and it's really helping them on their medical school application journey. This process is expensive, so if you can only do it once, that's the best way to do it. Make sure to check that out as well. I'm so excited that you guys decided to tune in. I'm hoping that this will be helpful. I know the medical school application process is daunting, it's confusing, but I'm hoping this concrete five month plan will help you January through May so that way when AMCAS, TMDSAS, or Comus opens in May, you are ready, you have everything set, and you can apply early. All right guys, take care and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any content coming up next. So high, I'm hypnotized. What's up is down, what's left is right. Chasing stars and holes.